On this episode of Camp Outside, we give you an overview of Prophetstown State Park in West Lafayette, Indiana. Check it out. Hey guys, I'm Kevin with Kemp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. Today we're going to do an overview of Prophetstown State Park near West Lafayette, Indiana. I recently did a six state park tour of Indiana in a Mount Comfort RV. Guys, I had a fantastic time. Thanks so much to Mount Comfort RV for putting us up in a Coachman Freelander and letting us explore Indiana. Guys, if you need anything RV related, if you need to buy an RV or a camper trailer, a fifth wheel, a pop-up, a travel trailer, whatever you need, check out the guys at Mount Comfort RV. They're just east of Indianapolis. They have a fantastic parts and service department, and they have a rental fleet. So anything you need RV related, definitely check them out. And guys, thanks for sponsoring this video. So let's take a look at Prophetstown State Park. Prophetstown State Park is located in West Lafayette, Indiana. It's easily accessed by Chicago or Indianapolis, Terre Haute, Bloomington, Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, Ohio, or Fort Wayne. Prophetstown is a relatively new state park with lots to see and do. There's a working farm, a Native American village, an aquatic center, and the campground is fantastic. One of my favorites, though, is the Tallgrass Prairie. The first thing that you notice at this park is the amazing Tallgrass Prairie. The prairie is fantastic. There are lots of trails to go through. There's even some paved biking trails. These were some of the shots from the campground at our campsite, uh, just views of the prairie. The wildflowers in the prairie were fantastic. The amount of wildlife in the prairie uh, was terrific. We really enjoyed watching the cottontail rabbits run around as well as all of the different songbirds that were in the prairie. I actually worked in a tall grass prairie when I was in college 20 years ago and so being able to experience the prairie again was really special for me and I really really uh, think that it, the Indiana DNR is doing a fantastic job maintaining the prairie at the park. There's a working farm at Prophetstown State Park. Let's take a look. The farm is one of the first things that you come across when you enter the park. It's indicated by the red arrow and you can't miss it. There's a large red barn. As you make your way from the parking lot into the farm itself, you can see there's a little uh, welcome area with some signage and some information. And this is a 1920s farmstead. So very cool to see what farming was like at the beginning of the modern age. The first building that you come to is a little house and I'm guessing that this house was more for maybe one of the workers of the farm. It's not the main uh, homestead uh, on, the, on the property. And what's really cool about these buildings is you can go into them. So we walked into this little house to see uh, what a house like this would be like in the early 1920s and so it's completely furnished which was really cool you could see the sitting area the bedrooms there's a bedroom off to the right here lots of neat artifacts plenty of things to see and as we make our way into the dining room Lots of stuff on the table. You could be in here all day just reading about all the different things that are uh, in the houses. It was really, really cool to walk through. And I really liked the kitchens. I thought the kitchens were really cool to see the old stoves and uh, ice boxes and things. So as we made our way out of that house, we made our way up to uh, the main homestead on the property. And again, educational signage is everywhere. So it's done really well. And so here's the main house. Gotta love the giant porch. Tire swing in the front yard. And 
And here's the inside of the house. Again, really well furnished, lots to see. The dining room. One of the bedrooms of the house. It's amazing that even though these houses and buildings aren't from the 1920s, they look like they are. The farm was opened in 1995, according to their website, but it gives a great idea of what farming was like in the 1920s. I think every house needs a pantry this big. As we made our way behind the house, we found the chickens. They had chickens, turkey, ducks, geese, all kinds of livestock. It was a lot of fun to walk through here and I'm sure this place has plenty of eggs. There's a turkey. And as we made our way past all of the uh, birds, all the chickens and ducks and turkeys and stuff we came to the barn where we got to check out a lot of the uh, period correct equipment it's hard to imagine a time where they transitioned from horse drawn farm equipment to powered tractors and uh, powered equipment. It was just really neat to see. We were able to take Ellie with us, so she was able to explore. She definitely wanted to chase the chickens, so we had to keep her on a tight leash, but she did love walking around. And then into the big red barn. Way to keep Ellie away from the little house cat that was sleeping there. I should say barn cat. <laughs> There's just something about old tractors. We made a friend.
it's hard to tell from the video just how big this barn was and up top they have huge haylofts I would have loved to be able to climb up into the hayloft but we weren't allowed and this is down towards the end of the red barn And look out into the field. They had some cows and horses out there. And the last building we checked out at the farm was the blacksmith shop. I imagine a blacksmith shop was very, very important in the 1920s to keep everything going and to keep the animals healthy shoeing horses and whatnot. They had a lot of tools and equipment in this blacksmith shop, so it was really cool to check it out. I'm pretty sure the flat panel TV was not original to the 1920s. But what a cool place to explore. By all means, if you're at Prophetstown State Park, check out the 1920s farmstead. There's a lot of history celebrated at Prophetstown State Park, and they have a Native American village to explore. Let's check it out. The Native American village is located across the road from the visitor center and is easily accessed by a couple of trails. We were able to walk the trails through the tall grass prairie and come across the Native American village. There are a number of buildings there. They're all labeled with some information. So this was the Medicine Lodge, and we did uh, go in this building. So you can see when we open the door that there are some hanging plants inside with signs next to them that indicated what they were used for uh, for medicinal purposes. It was very cool to see how uh, Native American cultures would have built the buildings on the prairie. And there are some of the medicinal pl plants. There's another area in the Native American village that kind of showed how uh, they would have worked. So the little hut there with all of the, um, uh, with the flat roof, that's where they would have worked. And this was a, a structure that they would have built. And this building was their granary. So uh, that's where they could dry and store corn or other grains. I thought it was interesting that uh, European settlers learned how to store their grain from uh, Native Americans. And honestly, how we store grain today isn't that much different. A visit to the Native American village is highly recommended 
if you go to Prophetstown. Prophetstown State Park has a monument to all the Native American tribes that were in the area. It's called the Circle of Stones. Let's check it out. The Circle of Stones is located in the far eastern part of the park. And it's a neat little dedication to the Native American tribes that were located in the area. This uh, particular monument was dedicated November 4th, 2016. So here's the Circle of Stones. Each rock represents a tribe. I really like how Prophetstown State Park incorporates so much history from the area. And the last stone was interesting. It says this stone represents those who stood with the known tribes, but whose presence history failed to record. If you want to do some fishing at Prophetstown State Park, they have a fishing pond. Let's take a look at it. The fishing pond is located at the far eastern section of the park, just north of the Circle of Stones that we just looked at. It is a nice fishing pond with plenty of bank access, and surrounding the lake are some picnic tables, so a great place to take a picnic lunch and do some fishing. And as you can see, boating is prohibited. The pond is catch and release only and you cannot swim in the pond. Prophetstown State Park has a fantastic campground. Let's take a look. The campground is located in the center of the park as indicated by the red arrow. The campground is primarily composed of two loops, the Spruce Loop and the Savannah Loop. The Spruce Loop has full hookups with water, electric, and sewer hookup and the Savannah Loop are electric-only sites. This was a fantastic campground. This was our site when we were camping there. We had a fantastic view of the prairie. We were able to uh, enjoy lots of uh, wildlife viewing right from the campsite and just had a fantastic time. The sites are equipped with picnic tables and fire pits with grill grates and electric hookups. So here's a driving tour of a little section of the campground. Be sure to check out our campground review video from Prophetstown State Park to see an entire driving tour. But this just gives you an idea of what a little part of the spruce loop of the campground looks like. These sites are equipped with water, electric, and sewer hookup, picnic tables, and fire pits with grill grates. This was a fantastic campground. It's really new. It's really nice. There's an excellent playground for the kids. The restroom facilities are fantastic. Just an excellent, excellent campground. I would stay here anytime I could. Definitely plan to camp at Prophetstown State Park if you're a camper. And now it's time for my son's favorite part of this park, the Aquatic Center. What a fantastic way to cool off on a hot summer's day. The Aquatic Center is in the center of the park, indicated by the red arrow. There's ample parking and a nice building uh, with uh, some locker room facilities and some restroom facilities. And the Aquatic Center itself is fantastic. Unfortunately, parts of it were under construction while we were there, so we weren't able to partake in all of it, but we were able to utilize the Lazy River and the Tube Slide. So as you can see, there are plenty of places to sit around the Aquatic Center and a nice little yard. 
um, just a really, really nicely done um, part of the park. There's also a concession area uh, in the building there so that you can get a snack or a drink if you'd like. And there's the concession area. So here's part of the aquatic center that was under construction, but you can see there are some swimming areas with some basketball goals. Here was the slide. Uh, there are two slides, but only the tube slide was working when we were there. And then here is the Lazy River, which is what we got to use. And the Lazy River is a lot of fun. There's plenty of tubes, so you just hop on a tube and just work your way through the river itself. And again, lots of places to sit or to throw your stuff. Some nice grass to sit on if you wanted to throw a beach blanket down or something uh, instead of sitting on the chairs. I'm guessing that by the time you see this video, uh, the other side of the aquatic center will be open. They said they were going to open it really soon when we were there. So there's lots of parts to the lazy river with little buckets above you to get you wet or uh, little sprinklers. Just a fun, uh, just a fun way to beat the heat in the summertime. There I am, <laughs> having fun cruising down the lazy river. Barb went down the slide. There you go. This park has a bunch of great recreation areas and picnic pavilions. There are basketball courts and biking trails, a volleyball court, all kinds of things. Let's take a look. The first section we're going to take a look at is the Prairie View group picnic area. There's a bunch of picnic shelters and playground facilities located here. Just a really neat place to spend an afternoon in the park. As we pan around, you're going to see a number of picnic pavilions and the playground in the background, as well as picnic tables and charcoal grills available throughout the area and a large uh, parking lot area to park, as well as some really nice paved uh, biking trails uh, to get around, as well as a restroom facility. So this is the Coneflower Recreation Building. It's one of the large uh, picnic pavilions available, as well as the Bergamot Shelter. And the Blazing Star Shelter. Lots of nice big picnic pavilions for reservation. And then this is the playground facility in the Prairie View picnic area. So again, some picnic tables and charcoal grills surrounding the playground area itself. Plenty of slides and climbing apparatus and monkey bars and all kinds of things for kids of all ages. There's some larger uh, pieces of equipment as well as some smaller pieces of equipment with a nice little shelter here in the center with some picnic tables. Some swings. A sandy area. Just a great playground for kids of all ages. A 
and that's a look at the Prairie View Group picnic area and playground. Next we're going to take a look at the Meadow View family picnic area which is right next to the Prairie View area. So you can see the Kemp bus parked in the distance there. There's a nice little parking lot there. And as we pan around, you can see that is the Bobolink shelter off in the distance. There's a playground area, some picnic tables and some charcoal grills, and there's a restroom facility as well. Again, a nice large open area, great for family picnics and gatherings. Here's a closer look at the bobolink shelter. Bobolinks are one of my favorite grassland songbirds. Their call kind of sounds like R2-D2 on crack. And then here is the playground area in the Meadowview family picnic area. So as you can see, it's not as big as the Prairie View uh, playground, but still really nice and with plenty of things for the kids to play on. Next, we're going to take a look at the basketball court. The basketball court is located over by the fishing pond on the eastern side of the park. As you can see, it's a nice full-size court in the middle of the prairie. A great place to have a pickup game of basketball. So I hope you enjoyed that review of Prophetstown State Park. We really enjoyed our stay at Prophetstown, and it was the first stop on a six-state park tour of Indiana guys so we are going to be bringing you a ton of campground campsite park overview videos hiking videos all kinds of videos from our Indiana summer tour so definitely hit that subscribe button that little bell icon that notifies you when we release new videos and hit that like button for me on this video so thanks to Mount Comfort RV for sponsoring us and giving us an RV to tour Indiana with you guys are fantastic thanks so much for being such a strong supporter of Kemp Outside and thank you also for putting on Let's Go Camping, which is our TV show. Guys, if you haven't checked out Let's Go Camping, I'm going to put a link down in the description below. Mount Comfort produces a 30-minute camping TV show that's all about camping, not just RV camping, but tent camping and, and all kinds of things about camping in Indiana. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. So guys, Camp Outside exists to help moms and dads take their kids camping, hiking, fishing, learn about nature, and develop a conservation ethic. We want to help you get you and your kids outside. So if you have any questions about Prophetstown State Park or, or just camping in general or anywhere in Indiana we've been, drop something in the comments below and we'd love to hear from you. Or you can connect with us on our other social media. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links are down in the description below. Or you can connect with us at our website at www.kempoutside.com. Dot com. So we produce new videos every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time right here on YouTube. Our Monday and Tuesday videos are focused on campground and campsite review videos, and our Thursday videos are on a wide range of topics including camping, hiking, fishing, how-to videos, gear reviews, tips and tricks, and a whole lot more. And guys, we shot so much footage of our parks at Indiana. We're going to be bringing on a Friday video series where we're going to do more campground and campsite reviews from Indiana on Fridays. And I think, guys, I'm also going to do them on Wednesdays. So pretty soon, we're going to have videos coming out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So definitely stay tuned because we are going to be bringing a ton of content to help you plan your trips in Indiana State Parks. So guys, thanks for watching Kemp Outside. Thanks to Mount Comfort RV for sponsoring the video and providing us that amazing RV for our tour. Uh, we could not have done this trip without you guys. Thank you so much. Guys, check out Mount Comfort. I'll put a link down in the description below where you can connect to their website and check out all of their awesome RV inventory. And guys, thanks again for watching. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm.